Okay, everybody, in today's uh, video, we are going to cover Psalm chapter 5. Now, the main idea of this psalm is found, I believe, in verse 12. The verse says, For you bless the righteous, O Lord, you cover him with favor as with a shield. I believe the main idea here is that the Lord blesses the righteous. So let's see that idea together. When we look at this psalm, it can be divided into two halves. We have verses 1 through 7 on the one side and verses 8 through 12 on the other hand. Notice that verses 1 through 3 are all requests. Give ear, give attention, hear my voice. These are all different ways of saying, hear me when I call to you, hear me when I prepare for you. Give ear, give attention, hear my voice. So listen to me. Now we see the same thing in verse 8, another request. So here is the request to listen to me. Here's a request to lead me. And then David describes his request in verse 4. Similarly, we see a description or explanation of his request in verse 9. So in ver both of these verses, David is explaining his request. And then notice how even uh, verse 7 and 11 start similarly with this idea of but. Notice in verse 7 we have I, and here we have all who take refuge. So we see is that the psalm moves from David to all of God's people. And the main idea throughout all of this is that the Lord blesses the righteous. So let's look at this in more detail. First, in verses 1 through 3, David prays. He prays to the Lord that the Lord would hear his groaning. David is in distress. He is in pain. And he's calling out to him, hear my word, hear my groaning, hear my cry. David is obviously in pain and he's calling out to God to hear him. And then what David does is he contrasts the wicked to himself. The wicked, God does not delight in the wicked. The boastful, another way of saying the wicked, they will not stand before God's eyes. Why? Because God hates all evildoers. These wicked who are boastful under God's hatred, they speak lies. They are bloodthirsty and deceitful men. So these people, David is not like these people. David cries to God. David speaks to God. He prays to God. He asks God to consider his groaning. He makes sacrifice to God. David is praying to God. But then there's another category of people. The wicked who are underneath God's hatred. Notice how extreme and emphatic this language is. You hate all evildoers. You destroy. Notice how God is the subject here. He destroys those who speak lies. It doesn't just say those who speak lies are destroyed. Rather, you destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors. This is emphatic language. So these are the wicked people. These are the people we've learned about over and over again. In uh, Psalm 4, these are the people who love vain words and seek after lies. These are the people who want to use God just to get more grain and wine. These are the people in Psalm 3 who are David's foes, who are rising up against him and speaking against him. Even in chapter 2, these are the people who set themselves against the Lord and who set themselves against the Lord's anointed. So these are the people in uh, chapter 5 who are not in the same category as David. David cries to the Lord, but there is a group of wicked people whom the Lord hates. In verse 7, we see David uh, compare himself again. David because of the abundance of God's steadfast love, will bow down toward the Lord in fear of you. So David prays, and again, he prays down here. Why? Because of the abundance of God's steadfast love. So that's super important. What separates the wicked from the righteous? It's the righteous are characterized by God's abundant, steadfast love.
So that's the first idea here. We see the same idea repeated. David says, lead me. So hear me and now lead me. He says, because of my enemies. The enemies are speaking vain lies against David. And David wants God to keep him pure, to keep him righteous, so that the enemies uh, aren't proven to be right. So lead me. Keep me obedient. When I sin, keep me as one who cries out to you. When I sin, let me be defined by your steadfast love. So this is the request. Lead me, God, in your righteousness. And then he again talks about these wicked people. These wicked people, there is no truth in their mouth. Their inmost self is destruction. Their throat is an open grave. They flatter with their tongue. This is what Paul quotes in Romans 3. And then David makes another request. Let them bear their guilt and let them fall. Why? Because of the abundance of their transgressions cast them out. Notice the similarity here. So the righteous are defined by God's steadfast love. The wicked are defined by their transgressions. So we have a a big uh, comparison here. And then he ends, not simply by talking about what David will do, but what all people will do. It says, but let all who take refuge in you rejoice and let them sing for joy. This verse continues to talk about God's protection over those who love God's name. And then to the main point, you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover him with favor as a shield. So the main idea is the Lord blesses the righteous. Who is the righteous? The righteous is one who cries out to God. The righteous is somebody who asks for God to lead them. And ultimately, the righteous is somebody who is defined by God's steadfast love. The wicked, on the other hand, do not cry out to God. They do not seek God. They seek after lies. They are not defined by God's steadfast love. Rather, they are defined by their transgression. So what David is doing here is he's praying to God. And he, he is stating that the blessed people, the righteous, are the ones who are blessed. The Lord blesses the righteous. This is the prayer. So here's a couple of discussion questions. First, explain a time where you sought God diligently amid pain. Again, explain a time when you sought God diligently amid pain. How did God answer you. Second, imagine and process together the reality of being the object of God's hatred. Like in verse 5, God hates all evildoers. He abhors the bloodthirsty and the deceitful man. So imagine just for a moment, if you were in this category of evildoers and bloodthirsty and deceitful men, imagine for a moment the reality of being underneath God's intense hatred. Now, third, express together the relief of not being defined by your transgressions, but by being defined by the abundance of God's steadfast love for a moment, or maybe a long moment. Just express together the relief and the beauty that you are not in this category. If you've trusted in Christ and turned from your sins, you are in this category. So just express that relief together. And then finally, how is God calling you today to take refuge in him? Remember, it's but all who take refuge in God rejoice. So the righteous, those who are Defined by the abundance of God's steadfast love are those who take refuge in God. You don't seek protection in the things of this world. You seek protection in God. So how is God calling you today to take refuge in him? Church family, in these verses, I want you to be encouraged that the righteous are not the perfect, but the righteous are defined by God's steadfast love. And I want you to be encouraged, greatly encouraged, that you are not under God's hatred, but under his intense love and i want you to be challenged to take refuge in him again today i hope this is a blessing to your family as you study psalm 5 together